chemotherapy is classically defined as the treatment of disease by use of chemicals. In addition to microbial management of a wound environment, this term has recently become adopted in the field of wound healing for several additional purposes. In recent decades, the advent and application of negative pressure wound therapy has been further augmented with the installation of chemotherapeutic agents. Our experience with the application of chemovac dressings has underscored the importance of careful technique for optimal results. We therefore recommend that the wound area be thoroughly cleaned and dried between dressing changes. Adhesive tinctures, such as benzoin or mastazol, are useful in increasing the ability for the plastic dressing to hold a tighter and more rigorous seal. It has also proven useful to window the wound edges with smaller strips of dressing seal in order to create more exact boundaries. This is helpful for wounds with irregular borders, the need for bridging two or more wound beds, and to prevent excessive contact between viable surrounding skin with the foam sponge. In addition, we recommend precise trimming of the foam with shears or even a scalpel blade. This further prevents the potential for maceration of surrounding skin. When the top cover is placed over the sponge, it is important to do so in a manner which allows a flat and uniform contact across the sponge and skin. By preventing wrinkles, tracks, or cigar rolls, one can minimize leakage and non-uniform distribution of negative pressure. The next step will depend on the type of negative pressure device and dressing being used. When modifying or augmenting a standard vac dressing with a makeshift ingress port, it is important to utilize IV tubing, which can be inserted directly into the dressing. For this, we recommend a minimal incision. Additional seal or tegoderm dressing material must then be used to seal this interface and thus decrease leakage or loss of pressurization. To our knowledge, this specific arrangement of the ingress and egress ports is of little importance. By this, we have not experienced any notable effects from gravity or direction of flow. It appears that the chemotherapeutic agent perfuses the sponge and is thus delivered to the entire wound bed without prejudice. Therefore, merely spacing a reasonable difference between the two interfaces is more than sufficient at achieving satisfactory distribution. At this point, negative pressure should be initiated. Once a satisfactory seal has been established, the chemotherapeutic input should be initiated. By initiating the negative pressure component, Prior to chemotherapeutic input, one can ensure a constant and predictable rate of infusion. A manual regulator is capable of delivering a constant and reliable infusion rate. Depending on several factors, typical rates of infusion range from 1 to 3 drops per 10 second interval, or a total of 25 cc's per hour. One notable observation about the use of foam dressings with infusion ports is the increased reliance on patient compliance. In this event, the discontinuation of chemovac therapy may need to be considered in favor of standard dressings or negative pressure wound therapy. After all, wounds have been healed for many years, long before vacuums.